You've finally found the right house, signed the contract, and now it's time for the home inspection. But what should you expect and what should you do? That's what we're going to talk about today. So let's dive right in. Before we do, let's take a quick look at what a home inspection is. It's a comprehensive examination of the condition of a house by an inspector or inspectors of the buyer's choice. In the DC metro area, the licensing requirements vary between the jurisdictions. Maryland and Virginia require that home inspectors be licensed, but the district doesn't. The home inspection is a process that helps home buyers understand the condition of the property they're about to purchase. And it also allows you to identify potential issues before you buy the home. But it's also a chance to get acquainted with the property that you hope is going to be your new house. To learn tips and tricks from a professional about how to maintain it and to be a good steward of the property during your ownership. Before the inspection, you've probably only been in the house for 30 minutes or so. A home inspection is usually a few hours long, so it's a great opportunity to get better acquainted with the house. Remember, bring a tape measure so you can check to see if your furniture will fit. The home inspection will probably cost between $400 and $750, depending on the size of the house, the number of HVAC systems, and a bunch of other variables. In larger houses, the number's probably going to be higher. If the inspector will also be doing a wood-destroying insect inspection, radon inspection, or other specialty inspections, of course, the cost is going to go up. The home inspector should be able to give you a price before the inspection. Now that we know what a home inspection is, let's get into the first tip. Communicate with your home inspector. Let them know if there are any specific areas or items that you're concerned about in the house. The inspectors I usually work with will check the listing online and any virtual tours of the property so they can get an idea of the layout and what equipment they may need to bring. Maybe an extra tall ladder or other goodies like that. It's important to have open communication with your inspector. By letting them know your concerns up front, they can focus their attention on the areas that matter most to you and ensure that you get a comprehensive inspection. Tip number two, make sure that you have access to all the areas of the house. Your real estate agent should coordinate with the listing agent to ensure that keys or access to sheds, garages, crawl spaces are all available during the inspection. Your home inspector needs to have access to all parts of the house to thoroughly inspect so the inspector and you can get a complete picture of the condition of the property. If you're getting some value out of this video, I hope you'll take a second to tap that like button. That'll help the YouTube algorithm put this in front of more folks who'd be interested. Thanks! Tip number three, show up to the inspection. It's essential to be present and focused during the inspection. There will be lots of information to absorb. Bring a notepad or whatever you're going to use to keep track and eliminate as many distractions as you can during that time. By being present during the inspection, you'll have the opportunity to ask questions and get a better understanding of the condition of the property. You'll also be able to see the inspector's findings firsthand to see for yourself any potential issues that need to be addressed. Tip number four, ask questions. Don't hesitate to ask the inspector about anything you don't understand. It's better to ask in batches rather than interrupting the inspection process. That'll ensure that all your questions are answered. A good home inspector has a rhythm of how they go through the house, and so you don't want them to get too distracted while they're in the middle of it because they might forget something. But usually there are breaks between floors or systems or rooms. There's a natural spot where you'll be able to ask whatever questions you have. Your inspector will be able to provide valuable insights and information about the property. And it's important to take advantage of this opportunity to learn as much as you can. So don't be afraid to ask questions, even if they seem small or maybe insignificant to you. If you'd like to get a copy of my most recent free home buyer's guide, click on the link below. It's chock full of great information about the whole home buying process, and it'll help you to avoid some of the most common mistakes that home buyers make. Tip number five, expect a list of defects. No house is perfect, and it's important to understand that the home inspection will uncover a number of issues. Don't let this discourage you. Instead, focus on the key items and work with your inspector and your agent to prioritize the list of repairs. 
feeling a bit overwhelmed is a normal part of the process. Even brand new houses have all kinds of items that need to be addressed. The goal of the inspection is to identify problems with the property so that you have the information you need to make an educated decision. Tip number six, focus on the big picture. Your home inspector will provide you with a detailed report, but it's important to keep the overall perspective in mind. The inspector should help you to understand which issues are most important and which can be addressed later. It's easy to get overwhelmed by the list of defects and potential issues, but it's important to keep in mind that the goal is to make an informed decision about the property. Your inspector should help you to understand which issues are most pressing and which can be addressed later so you can make the right decision about whether to proceed with the purchase or not. I think that a big part of a home inspector's job is to provide that perspective. I used to work with a home inspector who he was super detail oriented, but something happened and all of a sudden his lists became unmanageable. Nothing had any sort of priority. It was all top priority and it was really difficult for buyers to sort of wrap their head around what they should do and he really couldn't or wouldn't provide them with the guidance they needed. Usually the home inspector will generate a report with photographs either the same day or the following day depending on their schedule. If possible, I like to have enough time so that a buyer can review everything and maybe even sleep on it before making a decision about how to move forward. So they can try and prioritize the list, think about the items that are most important to them, and have a little time to consider the cost, urgency of repairs. And again, this goes back to what I said before about getting some perspective from the home inspector. Number seven, what to do after the home inspection. This really depends on what was negotiated in the contract. In the jurisdictions where I work, D.C., Maryland, and Virginia, the contract basically gives you two options. The first would be having the right to negotiate. So once you get the report, you go back to the seller with a list of items that you'd like them to address. This involves prioritizing the items that are most important to you, considering the cost and the urgency of the repairs, and coming up with a document that's submitted to the seller, along with a copy of the home inspection. It's important to talk to your agent about your concerns and to ask for their advice on the best way to approach the negotiation. My goal is always to try and help my buyer clients come up with something that addresses their concerns, but also frames it in a way that will hopefully be agreeable to the sellers so that we can come up with an agreement that works for everyone. The second option is the as-is option. I like to call it thumbs-up, thumbs-down option. You do the home inspection to determine the condition of the property, and either you decide to move forward or you walk away. Each jurisdiction has a slightly different language about it, so make sure to discuss it with your agent as you're writing your offer. One thing to keep in mind is if you've said in the offer that you're going to do the as-is option, that doesn't give you any rights under the contract to turn around and try and negotiate for repairs. If you'd like to see my most recent video about what's happening in the market, click over here. And if you want to subscribe to my channel so you get updated whenever new videos come out, then click over there. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you on the next one.